Hello, my name is Lucy Shen and I am now a freshly graduated Wellesley alum. Okay, so I'm sure it's like not as terrifying as it seems right now, but I am staring real life in the face. And it does not look friendly. So anyways, the last time I did like a Wellesley FAQ thing, I had literally just completed my first year at Wellesley. Since then, I've gotten a lot of new questions and my opinions on a lot of my old answers have changed a lot. Uh, so I'm gonna go through and like re-answer the questions now that I am a graduated senior. Hopefully this will be a good way to reflect on my time at Wellesley because I haven't really concretely thought about a lot of these questions in a while. This will be sort of like a, a two-part reflection on my time at Wellesley. I want to make another video just sort of saying goodbye, I think. So this, this will be the first part and then the second part will come out whenever I get up off my ass and edit the damn thing. Just like last time, I'm gonna have the table of contents below in the description and you can click the time markers to get to where you need to go in the video. So the first one was how academically intense is Wellesley? Uh, last time I answered that it was bad, but it wasn't too bad and that it wouldn't kill you and I take all of that back. It was bad. It was bad and I still agree that it wasn't exactly too bad and that you can handle it. You can learn to manage your time and your stress and figure out what works for you. But a lot of it comes in understanding the balance between like your work life and your personal life. And I'm sure that extends into real life as well. But so much of it is just realizing how much you're willing to put into everything and how much is worth it for you. My econ minor is showing. It's true. Everything boils down to a cost benefit analysis. And for you, if putting in more work and being more stressed out and possibly getting a marginally better grade isn't worth the amount of stress that you get from that, I don't think you should do it. It's valuable to sit down and think about your priorities. And if your priorities are not to get the perfect grades, but to have a good, enjoyable, fun college life, then you do you. Like if that's what's important to you, you should do that. Maybe my one regret, my one biggest regret at Wellesley is prioritizing my grades too much, which like has worked out for me, I suppose. And in many ways, that's all I've ever known how to do. But I feel like I should have put more effort into realizing that maybe that's not the best that I could have gotten out of my Wellesley experience. Question number two was how easy is it to meet men? Um, I still maintain that it's pretty easy, but maybe not easy enough if you're not the most outgoing person. For instance, if you're more of like a, a shy person and you don't usually make the first move, it can be harder. Uh, if you're not comfortable with party settings, it can be harder. Uh, sure, the bus exists and you can take it to Boston or Cambridge or wherever you need to be, but sometimes it's not the easiest thing to leave campus. Sometimes you're too busy with work to leave campus, sometimes you just don't feel up to it, and then as a result you don't really meet men if you're the kind of person who doesn't like to leave campus a whole lot. I think it's worth it to maybe explore other options. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> the next question that I want to make an amendment to ties into the first one, also, sort of. The question is, how do we deal with problems like addiction and depression? Previously, I answered that we have the Stone Center and you have your three free counseling sessions at the Stone Center and we have great support networks and friends who are so supportive and push you to get help when you need it. Not everyone has that amazing support network. Not everyone has this giant group of friends that they can always lean on. I realized that I'm really lucky to be able to say something like that. I had the tunes, I had Wushu, I had... You know, that's basically it. <laughs> Not just making friends, but like finding a place where you truly feel like you belong, that you can just like be yourself without judgment from others. And it can be very hard to find your niche. And if you don't, you're not gonna feel like you have that support network necessarily. It is definitely true that people fall through the cracks and that sucks. There's also the Stone Center, which is problematic in its own ways. I've heard from many people that they don't have enough staffers, first of all, um, which means that there are really long waiting times to get an appointment, and sometimes you can't make an appointment until like three, four weeks after you called in. Uh, I never ended up using my three counseling sessions at the Stone Center. I'm very lucky in the sense that I haven't needed them, but I've also heard that from my friends who have actually used them, that some of the staffers there are not the most helpful, and sometimes actually make the problem worse. So there's that. At Wellesley, the Stone Center only gives you like that counseling side, like the I need to talk to somebody side of things. If you need an extension or more time to do an assignment or something, you have to go to your class dean separately on your own and like email them and be like, hey, my professor isn't giving me that deadline I need or hey, I'm not comfortable talking to my professor about this, can you do it for me? Uh, and then the dean, your class dean will work out 
whatever it is that needs to happen there. I guess my point is just that the Stone Center is not perfect and it doesn't always get its job done. So the next question I want to update sort of ties in with that last one. The question is, do people ever feel like they chose the wrong place or like they haven't found their niche and they don't fit in? Um, and I think my answer at the time was that everyone around me was fairly well adjusted and it was not that hard to find your place and I realize now that I'm a very lucky person. <laughs> I happen to fall into groups that just were really good at making Wellesley feel like home. Um, the MIT Wellesley Tunes and Wushu were my two main groups of settlement. That feeling of Wellesley becoming home so quickly for me, I very much owe to these two groups. I have since spoken to several very close friends who have told me that they feel like they didn't really ever find their place here at Wellesley. And I think that's also probably much more common than I or many other students realize. It's normal to feel sometimes like you haven't chosen the right place and to wonder what it would have been like if you had gone to that other school you were thinking about on your list. It's normal to feel like maybe you chose incorrectly because everybody has their down days and this is frequently how it manifests. I think that's fine as long as you come out of it. I do think it's probably problematic if you come out of four years at Wellesley and feel like you never found your place at all. I feel like I'm just gonna keep saying this, but in the end, any college is what you make of it. And if you feel like you haven't found your place and you never will, maybe you should try somewhere else. All right, let's have some new questions, shall we? So the next question, new question. What is the environment like at Wellesley? Are students very competitive? I heard about the Wendy Wellesleys and that most students are very type A. They're very ambitious and competitive. Is that true in your experience? Yeah. Wendy Wellesleys are a real thing. <laughs> I wouldn't describe this Wellesley environment as being competitive because the competition really isn't like, it's not between students so much as it is like within yourself. <laughs> like all around you are these people who are constantly trying to one up themselves because they feel like, oh, like I, I did this great thing, but it's not great because I can do better. So long as the goalposts keep moving, you're never gonna feel like You've, you've done a good job. Maybe a more appropriate word for the Wellesley environment is intense and maybe slightly suffocating at times. If you let that pressure get to you, that pressure that builds up within yourself from like that cycle of I need to always do better. Once in a while you have to learn to like let it go. Sometimes you don't have the energy or the ability to do everything, to make all of the impossible possible. I had one friend who, when she took a break from tunes, told us that you can have it all, just not all at once and I've taken that advice to heart for sure since then. So over the years, I've personally learned a lot about how to take a step back and learn when I need to give myself some room and some time to just recover. Uh, I can definitely still do better, but I am significantly better at this than I was as a first or a second year, especially second year. My sophomore slump was like very severe, as in right after I made that bright and chipper FAQ video about how much I love Wellesley, uh, I was in the dumps for a year. The sophomore slump is real. And a lot of Wellesley students really, really, really want to always put in their best effort and it's good probably that this is a very contagious mentality because it drives you to push yourself as hard as you can. But sometimes pushing yourself to go as hard as you can is not the best way to go about achieving things. I think that a balance between hard work and relaxation is not just important but crucial. And learning how to achieve this balance is probably what I'm gonna spend the rest of my life doing. I don't know about you. The next new question is, what are your favorite moments or people or traditions or things that define your Wellesley experience? So my favorite memories at Wellesley almost always involve either the tunes or Wushu. <laughs> A few random great memories that just bubble to the surface of my mind include going tunneling. <laughs> Am I not allowed to admit that I go tunneling? We have like a system of maintenance tunnels under the school that we're technically not allowed into, but everybody does it so it's like an open secret. But basically you get in, somehow, you'll find out how. And then you just like walk around and there are cool furniture galleries and people like leave graffiti and little notes and you can like chalk things and it's fun. Multiple times now, the MIT Wellesley tunes have sung in lobby seven at MIT, which is like the big main, main lobby. Um, it's really echoey and I have some really sweet memories singing and just chilling in that place with the tunes. There was that one time that some Wushu friends, including myself, walked around like half of the lake at Wellesley so that we could burn this one candle that one of us had gotten um, that had like a ring in it. We just like literally sat there, lit the candle and like melted it down until we got to the ring. There's this one big tree stump by the edge of the lake that I really like sitting on and just doing some readings or just staring at the lake and the swans and the sunset. 
And some of my best Wellesley memories happened at Oxford when I became a lot closer with some people that I really respected at Wellesley. Um, and we learned a lot about each other because finally there was something bringing us together that we all had in common, which was being abroad at Oxford. There are countless more amazing memories and I'm glad they're there. And I've done my best to make my senior spring as filled with these warm, happy memories as I could. The next new question. What are some places I should check out or things I should do during my time visiting Wellesley? My mom and I came to visit Wellesley more than four years ago. We ended up spending only like a half day at Wellesley. We spent most of our time in the Boston area, just like in the Boston area, right? Like visiting MIT and Harvard also, and then just like going around Back Bay and the Freedom Trail and Boston Commons. And it was really cold because it was spring break and spring break in Boston is always like frigid, but it was fun and we got to see the entire area and get a feel for like what New England is like because we're filthy Californians who've never been to that side of the country. So I think the picture that I got from that experience was fairly accurate. Um, the half day tour that I did at Wellesley was just like a campus tour and then I think I sat in on like a 200 level psychology class um, because I was an intended psych major coming into Wellesley. I then, you know, changed my major like five or six times. My one regret about visiting Wellesley and then not doing the thing that I wanted to do, that I didn't know about wanting to do, um, is the lunch lunch date system, which is where I think there's like a spreadsheet or something on the Wellesley admission site, but basically you can request to have like a lunch with a Wellesley student and they take you to like some dining hall on campus and you just have free food and talk to this current Wellesley student about things that you're interested in doing and whether Wellesley can support you in those areas. It's like a, like a half hour lunch. Really short, really sweet. I think in general Wellesley students are very fun to talk to but of course I'm biased. Um, but I have yet to have like a boring conversation with a Wellesley student. So it'll be fun, I promise. And then the final question is what is something that you wish someone had told you before you went to Wellesley? As much love as I do have in the end for Wellesley, even though it tortured me in many ways. I think ultimately like a, like a warning I would like to share is once again reiterating that work-life balance thing. That it's really easy to get in over your head and to bite off more than you can chew and then feel like you still have to chew it. The entire work-life balance thing, it's not just like yourself. Like a lot of it is realizing in here and in here what is important to you and how to balance things, but it can be hard to execute on those priorities. It can be hard to walk away from things that you feel have always mattered to you, like grades, and to walk towards things that you have decided do matter more to you, like friendship and meaningful personal connections. And in order to do that, I think it's important to reach out to your friends and ask for help from anyone. So I used to think that by splitting my time between my work and my social life, that I was already doing the work-life balance thing properly. But it turns out that it's actually really important to just leave some time for yourself on the side to like be with yourself. Because we're often so busy with like that next show that we're working on and that next piece set or that next paper or that next midterm, you lose your own voice in your head like it just goes quiet because it's drowned out by all of these other things that are happening in your life it's so important to tune into that voice and to listen to it often to have some moments of quiet where all you do is just like sit there and reflect on your week or your day or your month even if you can only find one day a month to do this i think it's important still to do it if you join too many orgs you're gonna find that you don't have free time during the weekends that's necessary to do that because you've spent so much time performing going around doing things mixers events activities <coughs> excuse me i have really bad allergies on the west coast why didn't i come home in short time to yourself is important not just social time and work time but time actually to yourself with yourself listening to yourself actively and thinking about what you want to do next and whether you're living intentionally and i know i'm sounding like one of those weird like self-help gurus but like it really matters it's made such a difference in my happiness and fulfillment just thinking about what matters to me and how i'm gonna go about achieving that i don't know if that was actually like a meaningful update to the faq at all i don't know if this is a useful addendum but i hope it was after four years in college in general, I don't think this is just a Wellesley specific thing. I've become a lot more intentional about everything, I think. And I still have room for improvement here, but a huge part of this is recognizing that I have kind of a crappy memory. And so trying to fix that, I have started bullet journaling. I have started writing more for myself to document my own thoughts and my own progression. 
and to be able to look back on things and realize what sorts of things I was thinking about and what matters to me now in comparison. I think I've become a lot more open-minded about things and a lot more willing to engage in debate about things that I'm uncomfortable with or maybe don't know very much about. Um, I'm better at asking for help and I think I'm also better at making friends, like meaningful, deep connections, real friends. Yeah, I'll be making another video, I guess, an actual reflection, a more sentimental, nostalgic one. But I hope this one was helpful, and I hope I'll be able to look back on this video in 10 years and be like, wow, I grew a lot in four years, uh, but I, I also hope that in those next 10 years I will continue to grow. So, have a nice day, and I hope your college application process goes smoothly. Feel free to reach out with any questions. I'm always glad to help. Bye-bye. Oh, there's light coming in through the window. <clears throat> Why?